I like to think of translation as a performance. So you're performing a script or you're kind of doing your interpretation of it. And so um, I do think it's, it's a kind of living interpretation or version of the original. And of course, I mean, I think you're, if you're wedded to this idea that you can carry every single thing from the original into the new one, then you're, all, you're just gonna have a, a meltdown. <laughs> so yeah, you have to, I, I, I like to think of it as like, this is my Clarice voice that I'm doing and someone else maybe in the future will do a different one. So, and I think that's why often, another thing that's often said about translations is that you, you need them to be kind of renewed every, every several generations or so, or you know, there's always room for another version of a book. Yeah. I mean, I was intimidated by translating Clarice Le Spectre too, because she's been sort of a literary hero of mine since college. I kind of moved to Brazil in order to learn Portuguese and read her an original because her writing m meant so much to me. Um, and I think that you do translate at the frequency of your time, and it is a provisional work in a way, and you're translating at a frequency, and you know, maybe the radio frequency will be different in 10, 15 years, and I found that kind of a relief. I'm just translating the frequency of my sensibility, you know, in our time, and maybe someone will return at a different frequency in the future. I, I can't imagine what that will be when people have like their phones implanted in their brains, what, what that frequency will be. But <laughs> I, I don't know. And I, I, I hope future translators will return to Lispector's work and, and make their own art of it. So.